All right, let's talk about Free RPG Day. Uh, this is June of 2019, and uh, I was excited to find out that uh, one of my local gaming stores uh, is actually hosting a Free RPG Day event. I was super psyched. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss the first one. I, I think it's the first one. Maybe it might be the second. I just missed the other one. I don't know. But they're they're running it, and I'm going to miss it. But uh, I thought I would share uh, some of the stuff that I'd gotten in years previous. Because uh, years previous, I've driven to the other side of Houston to make these events. And... Um, if that means anything to anybody, I, it's it's a good, for me, a good two to three hour drive, depending. Uh, yeah, it's a good long drive, and I just don't like having to drive through Houston. It's The traffic is the worst. Their roads are like, what? <laughs> uh, anyway, but now we have one in our area, and again, I'm going to miss it. Oh, well. But let me at least show you what I got from these these places and give you a little quick rundown. But let me explain Free RPG Day. That's what I... So the whole video is for is to just kind of say, hey, this thing exists. You know Free Comic Book Day? It's just like that, only for people who like role-playing games. That's what it is, in a nutshell. Uh, you go to these events. Uh, ideally, they'll have a table set up to run games. Every time I've gone to one, there's been at least one good game being ran uh, somewhere in, in the building at some point. Uh, I spent a day at, at one gaming store uh, playing different games. Um, I, think, uh, I think I played Dungeon Crawl Classics for the first time at a free RPG Day uh, event. Um, I don't know what module that was that they were running. It was really good, and I, I wish I had gotten the name of it, because I would love to have picked that one up. But uh, anyway, here's some of the stuff that you could pick up. That that's uh, If you participate, or it, well, every store is different. Uh, some stores, they want you to make a minimum purchase before they give you anything. Some stores go, look, there, there's the table full of free stuff. Take one or two items. Other stores are like, okay, yeah, but you got to play you got to sit your butt in a seat and roll dice, which is my favorite version because I want people to play. I want people to learn these games. I want people to know what it's, what it's like to play the different games. And there's more than just Dungeons & Dragons. So what is this one? Right up on the top, Treasure of Talon Pass. This is the first free RPG day that I had went to. It might have been the first free RPG day. I'm not sure. But uh, this was at the beginning of 4th edition, and uh, this was written for 4th edition, but it still feels like a 3rd edition module. I really like this one. I know, I know, it, 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 well, you just said this is like 4th uh, edition. Uh, look, good is good. There were some good 4th edition modules. You can't fault the system which really wasn't a bad system. It just wasn't what most of the grognards like me really wanted from the system. Uh, a lot of people that cut their teeth on 4th edition. But, uh, yeah. Look at this. It's one of the few... This is the old way of, of doing modules. You, your maps are in the inside cover and you pop, pop it out of the cover. I like that. That was fun. Uh, premise of this module is simple. Um, you're after a thing. I think it's like the Jade Goblet or something. I don't remember. Um, but you're after something. You're trying to get to this place uh, before this other group gets there. Uh, there is a nice wide range of uh, encounters, you've got your exploration. If you like tactical combat, there's actually some good tactical combat in here too. Uh, I noted I noted when I ran this that there are some uh, places that, that, that take the fact that you're fighting one type of creature. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. Let's just say that uh, it takes things into account that you wouldn't normally normally see. Oh, there's something in the back. I don't mind spoiling this. Where is it? Where is it? 
it's in here somewhere. Ah. Well, heck. Yeah, maybe I should have uh, marked a page or two. This adventure has a new critter type in it. I think it was this one that has the new critter. Maybe it was the other one that had the new critter. I don't know. I ain't gonna worry about it. It's not that important. It would have been a spoiler anyway. Um, I don't know what these other papers are. I don't... I don't know. It must have been from an old game from way back. Um, check this out. Uh, my first 4th edition uh, character was a Dragonborn. I was like, what? That's cool. Huh. So that's new. So yeah, I, I Treasure of Talon Pass, like it, good game. I managed to talk the, the 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 shop owner into getting me the miniature because it says it comes with the miniature. <laughs> uh, felt a little bad about that, uh, but he he went ahead and got me the the shadow miniature that went with the book too. So somewhere in my collection, I have a shadow miniature. And I somehow managed to get a hold of this. I'm pretty sure this came with the game. I don't remember. I've already talked too long on this one. Let's move on. Ah! Kyber's Harvest. Ooh. Okay, guys. Um, not everything you pick up is good. Um, when I played this... I was hyped for 4th edition. I didn't know what it was going to turn into. My first game playing 4th edition was at uh, was at a free RPG Day event. It was a week before it dropped, if I remember correctly. And I was hyped. And I played a dragon board. I was like, oh, wow, this is kind of cool. How are they going to work this into the into the lore? Well, little did I know they were going to get rid of Greyhawk and Forgotten Realms and do something called the Ninterville. But that's okay. That I thought the Ninterville was pretty cool. Uh, it was a neat idea. Points of light setting. I liked it. I thought the setting was a good idea. I thought it was neat. Um, I was hyped for this. By the time I got to this, uh, it was starting to wear on me. and I, At this point, I couldn't figure out why. Uh, we were still playing 4th edition, but we were like, I don't know. And at the time, we couldn't put our fingers on it exactly what it is. I think the, the hype was starting to wear at this point. Caber's Harvest, this is meant to be f for the Eberron setting. And the cover looks awesome. It's got one of those Warforged on the, fr on the front. Uh, little fantasy robot guy. <laughs> uh, those guys are actually kind of cool. I, I like them. Uh... I, uh, we're playing in a at a D and D game right now, and somebody's playing a, a Warforged cleric, and you would think, well, that's like giving a protocol droid in Star Wars force powers, isn't it? That actually kind of works. It's kind of cool, actually. But what's wrong with this module? That's many people would say, well, it's fourth edition. Ha ha ha. No, 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 no. They're like I said, they're good. Really good modules in 4th edition. They really were. Um, so, um, uh, Keep on the Shadow Fell, I thought was a great, great little adventure. I, I ran that one, and it was fun. This one, i tell you what. I'm going to just show you the map. I'm going to show you the map, and I'm going to let you guess what the problem was. Well, let me just give you a little guess. Okay, yeah, you're looking at it. We go around here, we go over right there, we'll fight there, we'll fight over here, we'll over here. Okay, have you guessed what the problem is? Where's the exploration? I remember on a forum saying something to effect of, it's a rail shooter with dice. The encounters by themselves, individually, were not bad. I kind of thought they were okay. But I read this, and I was like, ah, this is... This isn't... It doesn't tell me anything about the Eberron setting at all. Uh, just feels... 
generic. I didn't like it. Uh, I got this little thing that went with it, a um, little tile. As you can see, I I don't think I even ran this one. I don't even think I tried to run this one. I, it just did not draw my attention. I think the the best thing about this module, the best thing about this module is, where is it at? Where is it at? Yeah, I'm doing it again. It's close to the front. I like this picture. Now that, that's a neat picture. That that says fantasy D&D. &D. That says another world. That's cool. I liked this, this picture. That's the only thing I really liked about it. I did not like this adventure. Kyber's Harvest. I'm sorry, Keith Baker, who wrote this. I did not like this. Um, maybe somebody out there ran this and thought it was great. Now, these, talking about these is taking too long. I'm going to start zipping through these. Uh, Changeling the Lost. This was in what we were calling at the time New World of Darkness. Uh, I've read this one. I haven't ran it. But, whoo, boy, there's a, it's, it's thin, but there's a lot to, a lot to digest. Uh, it's a narrate, nar uh, a narration heavy type game. Um, it's more on the storytelling side, less on the dice side. That's just what I remember of it. Uh, I like it. Um, one day I'll run this. Uh, hopefully, if I could ever find a group that I think would actually enjoy this, I. Uh, it's hard. To, I loved. The original Changeling the Dreaming from the Old World of Darkness. It was an amazing setting. It was a fantastic setting. This setting is nothing like Changeling the Dreaming, but it is every bit as good, in my opinion. And I read I read some stuff on this. I've never played this one, never ran it, but uh, I like it. I like it. I think it was probably going to be good. Um, yeah, you love my review style. Yeah, I like it. Thumbs up. Eh, I didn't like it. Thumbs down. Yeah. Here's one. This is a little dark, isn't it? Put it up like here. This is toward the end of the New World of Darkness line, Geist the Sin Eaters. It didn't stay on the shelves for very long. Um, I don't have this one wrapped, so I could actually flip through it. I... Vaguely remember reading this one. I don't remember much about it. Um, I do remember that it's a pretty spooky, pretty grim setting. Uh, maybe not as grim as Wraith was in World, Old World of Darkness. But it was pretty grim and pretty spooky, and one day I'll probably run it for a Halloween adventure one-shot. So we've done Dungeons and Dragons, we've done, basically we've done Wizards of the Coast, we've done um, White Wolf slash whatever they're calling themselves now. My favorite, um, Eden Studios, All Flesh Must Be Eaten, The Walking Dead, uh, maybe not their best introductory, uh, I think their best actually came with their Dungeon Master screen, Coffee Break of the Living Dead. And then there was another one that you could have downloaded online that I had actually ran that was a lot of fun. Uh, had zombie cows in it. <laughs> this one was good too. This one was good too. Um, the, the guy who wrote this one basically took elements from the stand... Uh, from uh, World War Z, from Walking Dead. It's even called The Walking Dead, but it's not The Walking Dead, so don't even don't even think that that's, that has anything to do with the show. But it's a funny thing about titles. You could you could use other people's titles apparently, and get away with it. Uh, it's got the trope of you wake up in a hospital or you wake up somewhere. It's a good trope. I'm sorry. I like the, those tropes. You wake up with amnesia is a good trope. It's, it has been done, but it's, it's a fun one. I like it. It's a fun one. You start out in a hospital, you wake up, your other survivors wake up. You don't remember what's going on. You're in the hospital. You got to escape the hospital. 
here are your pre-gens. Um, All Flesh Must Be Eaten basically loves the everyday guy. Um, even these guys, these are survivors, um, not norms. So you got normal people and survivors, and this one went with survivors, because they're a little tougher, a little smarter, a little more resilient. Uh, it's a good adventure. I don't want to spoil anything for it. You got to make it. There's some re rehashed um, art in here that came from the actual All Flesh Must Be Eaten game. It's like one of my favorite games ever. Haven't ran this one, read it. It's good. Recommend it if you get a hold of it. This one I know the least about. This is the introductory kit for Conspiracy X. Um, <laughs> that's all in the title. Ah, uh, this is X-Files on steroids. This is X-Files only you're a part of the conspiracy as, a part, as opposed to uh, fighting the conspiracy. I don't know, you might be fighting conspiracy too, I don't know. But yeah, I've read a little on this. And, uh, it's not my genre, but it is Eden Studios, and they haven't, they haven't written anything I haven't liked. It's too bad they, 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 they're not publishing things anymore. But, like, literally, I've, I've got Armageddon, I've got, uh, Terra Primate, All Flesh Must Be Eaten, Witchcraft, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, Army of Darkness, uh, Ghost of Albion. I've got all their core rule books and all, nearly all their supplements. And everything that I have read, everything that I've ran, I've liked using the Unisystem. I love the Unisystem. It's a good, it's a good solid system. Um, but for some reason, Conspiracy X, I just haven't really messed with it. I probably should correct that someday. Hmm. Septimus. This is really neat. Um, this is a space opera. Um, this starts out, you're in space, you're trying to get to this place. It's a giant Dyson sphere. It is the size of a solar system. So if that doesn't tell you right off the bat, super science, yeah, I, I don't know what is. The, the interesting thing about this game is um, it all takes place, once you get there, it all takes place inside this massive Dyson Sphere, and there are numerous factions uh, fighting for control, the most powerful being, um, I forgot what they're called, they're like a tech group. Uh, their religion is science, and uh, they're trying to micromanage everybody's lives and put everything under their control. Uh, look at that. It says D6 Quick Start. D6 system is an old, venerable system that uh, doesn't get a lot of love. I don't know why. Um, I wanted to get the core rule book of this, but the one time, the one time I saw a physical copy was at a convention, and I had to make a choice between that and something else. I don't remember what the, the something else is. I think it might have been the the Godsend Godsend Agenda uh, D6 system game, I think is what it was. I ended up uh, choosing over that. But yeah, Septimus. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's wild. It's out there. And uh, one day I'll run it, maybe. I keep telling myself that. Old one. The West End Games logo before they, they disappeared. Ah, West End Games. God, I miss those guys. Anyway, this video is going on 20 minutes. I just wanted to talk about a bunch of stuff and just kind of... Just show you. It's a little show-and-tell session, I guess. Um, not really a review of any of this, but I don't... Can you really say any of my stuff is a proper review? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. So, uh, until next time.